Good morning, folks. We are absolutely thrilled to be able to be here with you today. There are a lot of things that we are going to talk about. And folks, the name of the game today is helping people to understand that Christianity is under fire. And it is under fire in ways that we have not seen in the United States of America. Now, you would think that something like this would be absolutely unheard of. You would think things like this. No, that's crazy, James. It's not happening. I know a lot of people would like to think that way, but unfortunately, we are under fire and we are under fire in a big way. The case that I'm going to draw for this is going to be remarkable. Now, we have to start by just simply saying the most basic of this, and that is we shouldn't be surprised, right? None of us should be surprised. And I think that that's really, really important for us to understand and to know. And right off the bat, that should be one of the foundations of our discussion, right? Is the fact that, listen, the Lord warned us. It's not anything that should surprise us. It's something that we should be expecting. But I want also to understand, I want everybody to understand just how dark things have become and how fast it has become. And we are going to talk about all of that. But before we do, let me just acknowledge a few things because you guys are incredible. You're such a blessing in supporting us. You're a, you're a huge blessing the way you guys support us. And we're just very, very thankful for that. I uh, want to mention a few of those ways right now that you guys have been doing this. And it has been a tremendous blessing. First and foremost, uh, the Super Chats and the Super Stickers, both on uh, Rumble and on YouTube. You guys are really great, and I want to thank you for that. And, of course, um, Brad, I think, is the first one to the game on this one. Yes, thank you for that. You say, hey, y'all, visiting my mom, sister, her husband, and their children, Lisa and Levi. I am so thankful for a family who loves the Lord. Yeah, Brad, there's nothing that beats that, man. When you have people that love the Lord... There, it, I'm telling you, nothing beats that. And then John and Roger, thank you guys so much. Viking loves Jesus. You guys are awesome. I also want to mention one quick thing before we get started on all the show stuff that we're going to do today. And we do have a lot of important stuff to discuss. That is the fact that we have somebody that is very dear to us that we have asked you to pray for before he is a very, very special man, a man that I love deeply, and of course is an amazing worship leader at our church. He's extraordinarily talented, and his love for Jesus is far more inspiring than any of his music will ever be. And um, he, we just found out last night he was rushed to the hospital. Mind you, I just want you guys to understand this. This is a man who has had five strokes, okay? because of a hereditary disease that he has. This was the last time he was in the hospital and God miraculously healed him. He literally came out of that leading worship again at our church. Pretty amazing story. His name is Wayne. I want you guys to really be praying for him that the Lord will just touch his body. We found out yesterday that he is now getting ready, getting ready for surgery. He's awaiting surgery. It should be happening um, at any point, I'm actually fasting for him uh, until the end of the day. Uh, I think it's really important that we do things like this. His name is Wayne, and um, he actually has what's called an aortic dissection, which basically means a portion of his aorta is ripped, and it's what we would call a type B, which means um, it, it, it could be very complicated, okay? But God is bigger than all of that. Uh, any aortic dissection is going to be complicated, but it's a lot more complicated for him for a lot of reasons. And perhaps the most significant of those reasons is he has to go off the medication that thins his blood because of a specific hereditary condition that he has. And without um, that, he can't have the surgery because he runs a massive risk of stroking out while the surgery is happening if that doesn't take place. But if you know the obvious uh, there's a lot, there's so many other things that are going on there. He either can bleed out or he can have a stroke and they don't want either of those situations. So we want to just pray for him that God would just touch his body. And if you guys can continue to pray for Wayne, he's very dear to us. He's a very dear part of our family. And, um, I normally don't go online and make appeals this significant, 
But with Wayne, um, my goodness, we love him, and he is absolutely worth it, and he's somebody that we want to see around for a long time. So let's do this. Let's pray for Wayne really quickly, and then we will get into the gist of the conversation because there is some very important stuff here. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you, Lord, for uh, your healing hand, Lord. We thank you for the fact, Lord, that um, you know exactly what you're doing, Lord. You've always known exactly what you're doing, Lord. Um, and Lord, I know God that you are bigger than, um, anything, uh, that we have ever experienced or seen, Lord, you can heal, you can fix any problem, Lord, you are, uh, good at all of it, Lord. And father, I just pray that you would keep us, Lord, keeping, uh, keep us close to you, Lord, uh, seeking you, Lord, that our heart, Lord, would just be turned towards going to you with our, our our initial reaction, like it would be the thing that we default to. And Lord, in that, Lord, we're defaulting to pray for Wayne. Lord, we love him, Father. We care about him, Lord. We pray, God, that you would just touch his body, Lord, that, um, Father, he would be healed. And that, Lord, uh, all of these things right now, Lord, that he's suffering, uh, Lord, I just pray that you would just touch him, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would, uh, that you would heal him, Father, continue to just bring an amazing healing hand upon his life. We pray for Livia that you would just strengthen her in all of this. And Lord, we pray that this would be a speed bump, Lord, that it would be a function of yet another miraculous thing that you've done. So Father, we just love you and thank you. We look to you and we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so keep praying for Wayne, you guys. All right, so let's jump into this because I think that this is a really important thing for us to do, especially when we have this discussion regarding the days in which we are living. Now, I'm going to mute this for just one second. That was killing me. I kind of had to do that. Sorry. Um, we have to go over a passage that we go over a lot, but this time we're going to go over a slightly different aspect of this passage, and I think it's really critical. I think it's a really important passage for us to be discussing and going over, and the passage is really simple. Of course, we know that 2 Timothy chapter 3 starts off by telling us things that we should be expecting in the last days, and that should not be a surprise to any of us. We know what the Bible tells us we were going to be seeing. We know the things that we should be expecting. None of this should be a shocker to any of us, right? This is like critically important that we know that we are headed towards these days, right? Second Timothy chapter three, verse one says, know or this know also that in the last days, perilous times will come. And we know we are here. We're in perilous times. And he goes on to talk about the type of men and women that we will see in the last days, Right, And he starts talking about these people who, um, who will continue to oppose the word of God. Right, And I think it's really, really important to understand that this is going to get worse. It's not going to get better. Okay, So once we know that, then we go further down in this passage in 2 Timothy. And look what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. And I want to read this to you because it's important. He says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, or Iconium at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. But look what he says here, because this gets really interesting. Pay attention to this. This is super critical. And this isn't even tied to the last days, but we know it's going to increase in the last days based on passages like Zechariah and many other passages that we see all over the Bible. But look what he goes into when we read verse 12. He says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Not that they may. Not that, hey, you know what? It's, uh, you know, hit and miss. Depends on where you live. No, it is those that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall what? Shall suffer persecution. But evil men, look at this, verse 13, and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Notice that. 
They will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And by the way, we're going to get into this. Because the kind of deceiving that's going on right now is unbelievable. And actually, in some contexts, I'm going to show you exactly what this deceiving and being deceived looks like. I want to show you how it's starting in the United States of America and how it's continuing to sit in the United States of America because I think that it's critical that we understand what is actually happening. Christians are under fire and they are under fire for a lot of reasons. Not just one reason, but for a lot of reasons. It has started very subtly and over the years, Christians have been mocked in the United States of America. They have been made fun of. They've been minimized. But in the last few years, we have ran into a progression, a very serious progression, by the way, one that cannot be missed, in which they're not just being mocked anymore. Christians are becoming the enemy. And not just any enemy, but the primary enemy. Christians are being viewed as more dangerous than terrorists that are abroad. Christians are being more viewed as dangerous, more dangerous than communist leaders. Christians are being viewed as more dangerous than virtually anything that is out there. And it's all being done with hypocrisy. It's all being done at a level that is designed to destroy not only life, but it's being done in a way that is seeking to minimize what is true and what is real. So it's happening in a few ways. The first way is they're diluting Christianity. What they're defining as real Christianity is something completely different than what God says it is. And then they're taking real Christianity and they're turning that into the enemy. They're turning that into what's evil. And we are seeing this again and again and again. And as this is happening, we are now watching open, blatant, satanic worship beginning to take place. So all of it is happening all at once. And the darkness that we're beginning to see emerge as a result of it is becoming darker and darker and darker and darker. And by the way, the philosophies and the ideals that they are imposing on society after minimizing Christianity is getting more and more terrible by the minute. And folks, we are seeing it again and again and again. It starts with people making declarations that we ourselves should be upgraded into gods. We've talked about Yuval Harari, who's made that statement. And then it goes from there to a place where now, when people think that they're upgraded into gods and that they themselves are gods, then they begin to assume the role of God themselves and they make decisions that are detrimental to the rest of the world and to themselves. And it's terrible. So let me tell you how something like this starts, okay? It starts by mocking biblical principles. Let me give you a section of a report that was done by Jen Psaki I actually did a video on this and she puts down Mike Johnson. Now, listen, I'm going to just tell you this right now. I am not a fan of Mike Johnson. I think that Mike Johnson has made a lot of serious errors in his leadership as the speaker of the house. Perhaps the thing that I am most bothered with, with Mike Johnson is the fact that he continues to claim that he is a solid God fearing man, which I believe he is but he's capitulating to the pressure of the left and is allowing them to get their way. I still think Mike Johnson has the fear of the Lord. I still think that he is a good man in the sense that he, he loves Jesus. But I don't agree with a lot of the decisions that he's making in that he is capitulating to the pressures around him. Now that to me is a big problem. It's a huge problem, right? But that does not warrant... What's being said right now about a man who openly loves Jesus and doesn't apologize for his love for the Lord. But this is important for me to bring to the table because this is how they're beginning to attack Christianity. And this is really important. It's been happening, by the way, as a slow burn for years. This isn't something new like a story like this. 
but it's been a slow burn. And that's really important to note initially, right? So let me show you this really quickly because showing you this will help better understand what's actually taking place. This is Jen Psaki, by the way, who is the former White House press secretary under the current president. Unlike the current press secretary, Jen Psaki is actually very intelligent. That's what scares me about her because she utilizes that intelligence to deceive and manipulate and lie to people in ways that are very sophisticated. But I'm not going to get into the gist of all of that just now. But I want you to focus on what she's doing. Now, we're dropping in midway into her report. But it's important to point some aspects of what she's saying out. She's mocking him. She actually believes that because he's a Christian, right? That he, in essence, is crazy. That's what she's doing, basically. So let's take a listen to this, and this will make a little bit more sense as you watch it. It's not. And then there is his policy on gun violence. Speaker Johnson wants to talk about anything but guns. In 2016, he actually blamed school shootings on no-fault divorce laws, radical feminism, and legal abortion. It's all quite a stretch there. Then there's the obvious question of how Johnson's convictions square with his fierce loyalty to Donald Trump. So, first of all, (laughs) she is saying that it's impossible that school shootings could take place as a result of broken families. Broken families in abortion, broken families through the kind of insanity that we're seeing right now with fathers not being present in the house, those are all reasons why school shootings are on the rise. I want to make myself very, very clear. People would take their guns to school on a daily basis, even in California 40 years ago, 50 years ago. There are places around the country where that's still happening. Rare. I don't think it happens much anymore. But what's unique is in all of those days, back in the day, we didn't see these types of things happening. It was very rare when you saw something like this happen. Very, very rare. Now we're seeing it happen on a regular basis. It's disgusting. It's happening more than most people want to admit or understand or talk about. The reality of it is it is definitely not related to the presence of guns. It is undoubtedly related to what is happening in the falling apart of the family and probably better articulated, it is happening because we have asked God to leave schools. Schools, by the way, I just want to make myself very clear and I want to encourage you to do this. I am doing a mindset series on Sunday night on the Calvary Chapel Signal Hill live page. My guys will put a link to the live page up. I want you to subscribe to that page because I'm telling you this right now. It's really, really important, right? In this mindset series, we're talking about all kinds of things that a lot of people don't necessarily discuss openly in Christianity or actually really want to. And it's unfortunate because these are the things we should be talking about the most. And one of the things we're going to discuss is education. We're doing that this Sunday. And in the education discussion, you will be blown away with how evil the education system is in the United States of America and how evil it's been almost from its inception. Virtually from its inception. We'll talk about that in a moment. But education has always been a place in the United States of America, unfortunately, brainwashing. And there's been a lot of it going on. But listen to what is said here. Because his support of Donald Trump relates to the idea that Donald Trump is going to bring in policies that are more aligned with the scriptural precedent. It's really important we understand that. Okay? So let's continue to listen to what she says because what she's about to say is going to show you how sarcastic these people are with respect to Christianity and how they're attacking Christianity a guy who has been married multiple times, paid hush money to a porn star, and joked about grabbing women. I would love to know what passage in the Bible told Johnson to become one of the most important architects behind Trump's effort to overturn the 2020 election. Which passage? Was it God whispering in his ear to ignore the Constitution and disenfranchise millions of voters? 
So we all know, by the way, that what she's saying is just an outright lie. We all know it's a propagandist lie. We know that none, nothing of a sort happened there. Okay, we all know that. As a matter of fact, we're not going to get into all the specifics of this. We don't have to, but we all know the truth. That's beside the point. Okay, look at what she continues to say. And by the way, all the bad, terrible stuff that Donald Trump has done, okay, not that I would ever minimize it, but remember, we didn't vote a pastor into office. We, uh, we voted a president into office. And the funny thing about the president being in office when he was is he didn't do any of the things that she's talking about when he's in office. As a matter of fact, he did everything becoming of the office, unlike certain presidents that I can think of that were having sexual relations in the Oval Office involving foreign objects. Okay, I'm not even going to get into the craziness of all of that, Bill Clinton. But uh, uh, there's been a long history of presidents doing nonsense like this. I'm not even going to get into it. Not that I'm trying to deflect here. But her point is not well taken. Okay, but listen to what she does here, because now that she's kind of got you thrown off a little bit, look what she's going to do. It's hard not to think that Mike Johnson's idea of what America should be is drastically out of line with what America actually is. He clearly envisions a country that's less democratic and less tolerant. And that may explain why he seems more comfortable with the America of the 18th century. Okay, by the way, I, I, wanna, I wanna just say this really quickly then I'll rewind it. Less tolerant, right? <laughs> less tolerant of what? Less tolerant of things that are gonna destroy the United States of America? Yeah, I think he's less tolerant of those things, right? But it's funny how she is attacking our our love for God and our love for righteousness as something that is attacking the American way of life. Now, she might be right because if the American way of life right now involves trying to satisfy an insatiable appetite for lust, well, then undoubtedly, Mike Johnson wants to destroy the American way. It's very important that we remember this, okay? Like critical than the America of today. The truth has been replaced as the greatest virtue in society by tolerance. Well, we're the in inherently intolerant ones who say, wait a minute, life is sacred because we're, we're endowed by our creator. We're certain inalienable rights. We have to stand up for those. Oh, you bigot. Can't you be a little more open-minded? Come on. That's so like 18th century, you know. Well, they told us that if we didn't maintain those 18th century values, that the Republic would not stand. And so this is the condition we find ourselves in today. He's 100% right, by the way, 100% right. The, the, the Republic functionally depends on, the existence of the Republic as we understand it today, functionally depends on the idea that we, as a group of people, maintain a certain level, and this is really, really important that we get this, a certain level of understanding that righteousness has to drive this type of thing. Look, let me explain what I mean when I say this and we'll continue on, right? Because this, this uh, brings to us a really good uh, inflection point, okay? Or, or a good reflection point. I said inflection point. It brings us to a really good reflection point, okay? Let me, let me bring you to this graphic. I love this statement. Samuel Adams says this. He says, while the people are virtuous, they cannot be subdued. But when once they lose their virtue they will be ready to surrender their liberties to the first external or internal invader. There's so much wisdom to that. That makes so much sense. I, I, I have to say this because I think it's like really important that we pay attention to this. This, the, the wisdom in that kind of statement centers around the idea that our founding fathers knew Beyond a shadow of our doubt, beyond the shadow of a doubt, our founding fathers understood what was going on. They knew what was up. They understood it very, very clearly. The moment we walk away from the things of God becomes the very moment we begin to see our republic being lost. So look at what Jen Psaki does in ending this. And this is going to be the beginning of my point. Not the end of it, the beginning, because I'm going to show you what a progression looks like. Okay, watch this. Just holding on to those 18th century values there. The problem with Johnson isn't at all his faith. He's entitled to his personal beliefs, as everyone is, even if they come from the 18th century. But when those beliefs encroach on the rights of others, that's when it becomes dangerous. 
or the, the rights of gay people, trans people, or the millions of Americans out there who were entitled to have their vote counted. So <laughs> if, if this angers you, oh, then I don't blame it. I don't blame you for it being angered because she just deployed all kinds of techniques that the devil is really good at. And remember, we talked about this. I read this to you. I just read it to you. When, he when we talked about Christians suffering persecution, look at what the Apostle Paul says. He says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, right? Deceiving and being deceived. So that's what she's doing. She is deceiving and being deceived. She is teaching people to walk in comfort with respect to the deception that they give themselves to. But this should not surprise you because what she's saying is you're outdated and you're dumb because you're following a 18th century value. Well, I got news for you. This is a value that transcends anything in the 18th century. These are values that have existed from the beginning of the creation of mankind. And just because something is old, it doesn't mean that it's bad. And just because something is old, it doesn't mean that it doesn't apply. It doesn't mean that it's outdated. I'm sorry. We have to remember this. We have to remember this. Because if we don't remember it, then it begins to progress. Because what these people will do is they will start subtly, and in some cases actually very directly, making attacks on Christians and blaming Christians for things that are going bad when in reality what is happening is there is a lust for sin the lust for sin destroys the life and the society around them and then when life and society is destroyed around them who do they do what do they do they attack the christians because if you can attack the christians then you can remove any potential for anything getting better later. Anything being healed later. Anything getting fixed later. It all goes by the wayside. Folks, this is the type of thinking that they do. And as I had shared before, and as I will share again, these types of attacks continue to progress in ways that are absolutely reprehensible. So let me show you another subtle way that they attack. And again, looking at this, it's just a very viable, very clear picture of how they do what they do. But let me show this to you because this, this should make a lot of sense for you, especially when you just stop for a moment and examine how even the subtlety can make Christianity such a terrible thing, right? Watch this. And this, by the way, is a player in the NFL. And I want you to notice when he was questioned about him winning the NFL, you know, winning one of the games, what he actually said versus what they edited to make it sound like he said. Again, another way that they are attacking Christianity. Watch this. Because it starts with these things, but then it turns into something much uglier, okay? But watch this. This is, this is a very powerful picture, okay? I mean, your first NFL season and a record-setting performance for you. What does this moment mean? I mean, it's been amazing being in this city for as short as I've been. Okay, pretty cool. Been amazing being in this city for as long as I've been. But that's not what he said. It was edited. Look what the edited version or the non-edited version looks like on the left. And I'll play it again so you guys can see it again. Okay, here we go. First of all, I just want to give all glory and praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's been amazing. Being you guys get that? Let me play it for you again so that you can have the benefit of watching it. One In more your time. First NFL season and a record setting performance for you. What does this moment mean? I mean, it's been amazing being in this city for as short as I've been. But first and foremost, I just want to give all glory and praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's been amazing being. You guys get it? You guys see what they're doing? It is a slow roll. It's a progression. And we've allowed the slow roll to happen for a long time. And now what used to be a slow roll is beginning to pick up speed. 
And it's beginning to pick up speed in some very, very significant ways. Okay? One of the ways is now Christians are just outright being named as evil people doing evil things. And what is right is now being called wrong. And what is wrong is now being called right. None of this should surprise you. So let me give you an example of this. The Iowa caucus, we've talked about this. I've actually shown you this video. The Iowa caucus has actually come to a surprise to a lot of people. Now, this is a thing in the past. We went over this months ago. But people were shocked over how radically Donald Trump won that caucus. Donald Trump, Donald Trump by the way, is the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party. We know that. We've got a big battle ahead of us. There's a lot going on, right? We have to pray for the president, right, by the way. We, we really do have to pray for the former president because he has to change his mind on his stand on abortion. He has to. For a guy that brought in the Supreme Court justices that got rid of Roe v. Wade, we need him to stop thinking about compromising in this area. We really, really do. This is a big deal, and we need to pray that God will change his heart. And I'm praying that God will use the right people to change his heart about this issue because we cannot afford to have a president that will support abortion on any, on any level. We just can't. This country cannot afford to continue to lose babies at a rapid pace. We, just, it, it's, we can't do that. But that's beside the point. Let me swing over to how this progresses. This is the Iowa caucus. And in the Iowa caucus, of course, people are pretty devastated about the fact that Trump won the way he did. And so now the talking heads on MSNBC, or I, I like to call them MSLSD, are actually trying to provide commentary in order to make sense of what's going on. I want you to notice the subtlety of what Joy Reid does here. By the way, I do think it's ironic that Joy Reid is going to talk about white people and put white people down and Christianity all at the same time while she's got dyed blonde hair on her. <laughs> I just I I think just think it's the ultimate irony. I just think it's really, really funny. I think it's just a crack up, right? I hate white people, but I'm trying to be like a white person. That's a whole other story. We'll just we'll just leave that be. I'm I just the irony of it is just really, really funny. Okay? But watch this. Watch what watch what she does. It starts with God being excluded. It starts with God being mocked. It starts with people pursuing their own sinful passions and behavior. It starts with the acceptance of all kinds of wickedness. And then it turns into this. And we're not even close to where it is right now. But watch this. This is a state that is overrepresented over by white Christians that are going to participate in these tonight. caucuses, yes. especially tonight. By the way, can I ask you this question? When, when she, what do you think she means when she says overrepresented by white Christians? She has to say white Christians. Is it, is it possible that the black church in the United States of America or lots of people who associate themselves with the black church in the United States of America are some of the most vocal supporters of abortion? So when she says the white evangelicals, what she means is people who adhere to the scriptures. And if they're a Christian and their skin is white, then it's way worse. Why does she have to say white Christians or evangelicals? Why can't, why can't you just say evangelicals? And what does she mean by overrepresented? I can tell you what she means. What she means is there's no state in the union that should be represented at all by the ideal and philosophy and heart of biblically driven Christians. That's in essence what she's saying. By the way, this won't be the first of the rhetoric that I show you where this type of thing is being said. And I want you to pay very close attention to her nefarious attempt to make Christians look evil and terrible and wicked. Now I'm going to play you another clip of her defending Sexual exploitation of children. Okay, watch this. I'll rewind this from the beginning. Here we go. 
This is a state that is overrepresented overrepresented by white Christians that are going to participate Particularly in these tonight. caucuses, yes. especially tonight. Um, I today, earlier today, reached out to Robert Jones, Robbie Jones, um, from the Public Religion Research Institute, knowing that we were going to talk about Iowa. And this is a hyper evangelical st white state. So I asked him, they, what are they? Hyper evangelical white state. Hyper evangelical white state. White devils. Yeah. Get out of supporting Donald Trump because he keeps losing. He keeps delivering losses and losses and losses. And he said the following. They see themselves as the rightful inheritors of this country. And Trump has promised to give it yeah. back to them. All the things that we think about, about electability, about, you know, what are people gaming out or mm -hmm. none of that matters when you believe that God has given you this country, that it is yours and that everyone who is not a white conservative Christian is a is a fraudulent American. So n nobody who's a white conservative Christian has ever made any kind of stipulations as such. I don't think you could be a white conservative Christian who believes in biblical fundamentals and have this statement made to you and that you would stipulate it even though it wasn't your statement. You would stipulate to it even though it wasn't your statement. But again, she is demonizing people who are believers. By the way, God did give us this nation. He gave it to all of us, believers and non-believers. Those of us that... that came into this country, God gave this to us as a gift. The founders of this republic, it's not a democracy, of this republic recognized very quickly that if we remain with the mindset that says we will worship God Almighty and we will seek him, then our approach to how we view these things would completely change because we would realize that in order for the Republic to stay intact, you have to be righteous. And in order for the righteous to be re protected in this Republic, we can never lose sight of who gave this Republic to us. And that's the Lord. Very, very important that we understand all of this. Okay? Very, very important. All right, what you're about to see next is this same woman. This is Joy Reid, folks. This same woman who actually, I think recently has even claimed to say she's a Christian. But remember, she's not a white evangelical. She's a black Christian. Which, by the way, some of the godliest believers I have ever met. Solid, hardcore but biblical, anti-abortion, love God, love this country, are black people, okay? So this has nothing to do with the color of anybody's skin. So I'm gonna make myself clear there. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin. It has everything to do with what's true and what's not. What you choose to accept and what you choose to live according to. And if what you choose to accept and live according to is anything other than the Lord... You're going to have a miserable life. It's that simple. So this is Joy Reid. Joy Reid is having a conversation with a woman whose name is Tiffany. I believe it's Justice. I think that's her name. And what's, what's really interesting about her, this is a Moms for Liberty organization that she founded, is that she's contending that we should not exploit our children to porno pornographic material in public school. I think that's a fair assertion. But look at how, because this is like really critical. Look at how I just like blatantly she defends wickedness. This is like really important. And by the way, I don't even think Tiffany is a believer. She may be. I don't know. I, 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 I don't have any idea. But just look at how fiercely Joy Reid just completely opposes the idea of not exploiting children to this kind of nonsense, okay? And this is where it goes. Guys, remember, as I've said this before, it starts with the light mockery, and then it begins to go here. And when Christians start vigorously opposing all of this, 
then they really become the enemy. Watch this. The question I'm asking is, what is the... Oh, by the way, I do want to say this because it is like really important and, I, and I'll go ahead and rewind it, okay? There is going to be terms in here that you might find very offensive, okay? Please understand that. Um, they, they are deemed as offensive. If, if you have kids nearby, you do not want them to listen to the next two minutes of this. Two, two minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, well, it'll be a little bit longer than that because I have to stop it in between because of copyright stuff. But um, it's offensive, okay? I just want, just a quick warning, it's offensive, all right? So make sure you're away from little ears. If there are little ears around, you don't want little ears listening to this. It's really, really important. You do not want little ears listening to this, okay? All right, here we go. The question I'm asking is, what is the expertise that you have and other Moms for Liberty advocates have to decide that a book, an award-winning book, like All Boys Aren't Blue, isn't oh. appropriate for students to read? What, what is your expertise? What a tragic story of a young man who's anally raped by his adult family member. So mm -hmm. you have incest, rape, pedophilia. Joy, you said you'd let me answer, so sure. I'm going to answer Please for do. you. Please um, do. In what context is a strap-on dildo acceptable for public school? Just, mm -hmm. let, I mean, that's my question mm -hmm. to you. Tell me what the context around the strap-on dildo or the rape of a minor child by a teacher. Hold on a second. No, 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 no. no wait, We're hold talking on. about no, no, public no. school. One, one moment. All right. So now you've asked me. So, so I, I want to just stop right off the bat. She's immediately, and, and I want to I go back and read this passage, okay? But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You think that's what we're seeing right here? Her issue is not even arguing. Joy Reid's issue, the one who just mocked white evangelicals and say they're overrepresenting a specific state in the union. The same girl who doesn't seem to like white people, but she's kind of dressing like white folk. But there's a way that white folk dress. I don't know. But here's the thing that I think is really funny. She's immediately attacking Tiffany over one issue that is perhaps the most significant of everything that's being discussed. And that is, as a mom, what expertise do you have to determine whether or not children should be exposed to strap on mm, and sexually explicit material? This is the problem of education, folks. This is the problem. This is where, this is why education has gotten to the place where it has destroyed the lives and the minds and the hearts of so many people. Parents are the experts. Her qualifications to understand what's acceptable and not acceptable is based on the fact that God made her a mom of children. And that expertise is all the expertise you need to be able to make those assertions. But Joy Reid is about to attack all that. It's, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Question. Sure. Well, I'm going to answer it. Okay. Well, who is the main character? What's the name of the main character in All Boys Are Blue? But, by the way, can I, can I just I just want to say this. When she asks who's the main character, she, what she's trying to do is stump this woman. But here's my thing. Okay? If, if I find out that my child in a public school environment, which might, you're never going to catch my children in a public school environment. They'll always be homeschooled. But if my child gets, to, gets exposed to pornographic material, why do I have to know the name of the person who's in the pornographic material in order for me to assess or assert that it's wrong? It, wouldn't it be ridiculous? Think about it like this. Murder is wrong. And if that guy walks into the room and he kills somebody, that's wrong. It would be like Joy Reid coming to me and saying, well, do you know the guy's name? I don't need to know his name. Knowing his name doesn't mean anything. No, knowing his name is worthless. All I know is that it's wrong and we should understand that it's wrong and we deal with it as such. It's that simple. Here we go. 
you're asking me right now. You just gave me very specific information about this book, so you're presenting yourself as somebody expert. It's the gentleman. Hold on. Who's the main character in the book? The main character is the author. Who's the? What's his name? George, I believe, is his first name. Because you're giving me very specific information that is. You're asking me to remember the name of an author. You just remembered very specific names. Joy. Here's my question. We're talking about here's my question. You didn't answer my question. No, no, no. I'm gonna. I'm going to answer. Great. I would love to hear that. Absolutely. Well, I'm interviewing you, and you're not interviewing me. So let's just make sure it's a conversation. Okay. Okay, so, so is that amazing how hostile she's becoming towards a mom that wants to defend her children from pornography and defend your children from pornography? It, 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 it's, it's absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy. By the way, this, this whole thing is getting uh, uh, pretty intense. I mean, it is. And uh, look, I'm all for the idea that we need to continue to go out of our way to expose this stuff. But I just want you to understand our minds and our hearts are not made better by being exposed to nonsense like this. Our minds and our hearts are made better by seeking God out at his word. And we'll talk about this. I'll get into more specifics about this in just a second. What I'm saying to you is that as you are not an expert in this book, I don't or have to be an expert no, 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 to know that those aren't appropriate for public school. I mean, this come on, let's book get real. is a full context story, as you said, of the author's experience. Why is it your right or a Moms for Liberty activist's right to say that a parent who wants their child to have access to this book, which gives a personal experience of this author, that they, the, why doesn't a liberal parent, for instance, or a parent of an LGBTQ kid, why don't they have a right for their child to just have access to this book? Why is it? Well, they have a right to have access to the book, but if they expose their child to that book, then they should go to jail because it's, um, it's uh, sexual exploitation. It's that simple. It's sexual exploitation. I don't need to know the character name of the book. I don't need to know the life or the story of the person in the book. All I need to know is that I will not expose children to that. There are a few words that are being shared by this woman to powerfully demonstrate a principle that I don't want your children hearing, which is why I warned you and I said, keep the little ears away from this. <coughs> it's very important we understand the significance of what we're seeing right now. You're right to say they can't. So again, we're talking about incest, rape, and pedophilia. And Boy, each parent, no, Joy, each, hold one moment, moment. no, no, no. Each parent has to decide what is appropriate for their child to read. So I want you to answer. I'm going to so, so each parent has to decide what's appropriate for their child to read. Do you understand the backwards reasoning behind this? If she really believes that each parent has to decide what's appropriate for their child to read, then that would mean the imposition of documentation that involves pedophilia, rape, exploitation, so on and so forth, should not be made available as a requirement or any type of reading in a public school system. Make, make, make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. You should not force documentation that specifically and illicitly discusses sexual exploitation and pedophilia to anybody in a public school system of children of tender age. I'm sorry. It is not acceptable. If this happened five years ago, you'd go to jail. You'd go to jail. MSNBC, if, if an interview like this happened on MSNBC 10 years ago, there wouldn't be a station. Every single advertiser worth a bean would pull away. They'd be done. We're undoubtedly, undoubtedly being reminded of what happens when the heart of God is messed with a little bit. Y'all don't know what a millstone is. Maybe you ought to go look into that one. You know what I mean when I say that. Okay, one more time. Right. What is your right to tell a parent who wants their child, who might feel seen by this story, why oh don't they gosh. have the right? Why don't they have the right as a parent to say, my child can have access to this book? If a child feels seen by this story, that means that they have been uh, the victim of a predator. That means that they have either been raped by a family member, they, they, they've experienced um And your proof of that is what? 100% right. 100%. She's 100% right. Well, your proof of that is what? 
You just said that What's if a child feels that? seen by this story. They, so they, they, what, no, 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 what no, no, I'm no, no, saying, no. Joy, You're now making assumptions no, about it. Joy, no, no, But if a Let child has a, been no. raped, we should do a lot you better than put a book on a library Now you're literally shelf. creating we a story behind a child that you don't know. You, you get that? You get how dark things are becoming? So now, a person who stands up for righteousness is being minimized as somebody who has no expertise, no authority, no ability to be able to discuss the difference between right or wrong. And don't you dare try to assume that you have the right to keep your children from becoming exploited. Right? And then this happens. Let me pray that let me play this for you. You guys have seen this? I bragged about this moment to a lot of people. I was very proud of Jack when Jack did this. Super proud. I guarantee you the prayer that he had to turn in before he actually appeared on Capitol Hill and did what he did was not the same prayer that he prayed. I know that for a fact. Because Jack said that the Spirit of God convicted him. And he did what God told him to do because he, what he did was wrong in submitting the prayer that he, that he submitted. So he prayed to Almighty God. And look what he does here. I want you to do me a favor, by the way. I just want you to evaluate the prayer for me. Seriously. I want you to critique Jack. I want you to tell me if Jack does anything wrong in this prayer. Put it in the comments. I'm going to play it all in its entirety, all the way through, from beginning to end. I'm not going to interrupt it one bit. I'm very proud of Jack. Super proud of Jack. But tell me if there was, in your comments, tell me if there was anything wrong. I'm building a case here, folks. Okay? Believe me. This, this will make sense. Watch this. The house will be in order. The prayer will be offered by the guest chaplain, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, Chino, California. <clears throat> Let's pray. Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, together we come before you in humility as a people in need of your forgiveness, your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. For these 250 so years, our fathers in this Congress have prayed for your guidance and protection. And so we stand here in humble petition that you today might do the same that this nation and its unparalleled constitution, your great gift to all freedom-loving people, might be renewed here and across this land as a beacon of hope to all who seek peace. <laughs> I ask you today, Father, to bring to us a great awakening of righteousness and confidence in you, who alone is mighty to save. Hear my cry in this hour of great need that we might be humbly blessed before you in the repentance of our national sins. You, almighty God, are the source of all wisdom, and there is no wisdom but that which comes from you. So please come upon those here who are the stewards over the business of our nation with your wisdom which comes from above and with your holy fear, knowing that your coming day of judgment draws near when all who have been and are now in authority will answer to you, the great judge of heaven and of earth, for the decisions that they make here in this place, I offer this prayer to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Son, your Son, and our crucified Savior and resurrected Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> amen! Tell me, I'm going to wait. In the comments, did Jack do anything wrong? Any problem with what he did? Not one lick. Everybody is saying, excellent, amen, it was great. Do you know that they're calling Jack a terrorist? Do you know that they put him on a no-fly list? Do you know that they have characterized him as a co-conspirator? in everything that happened on January the 7th? Did you know that? 
Or January the 6th. Sorry. I don't know why I said January the 7th. <laughs> January the 7th is when we celebrate Christmas in the Middle East. Isn't that funny? It's getting bad, folks. Let's increase a little bit the progression, shall we? How about this? This is <coughs> Morning Joe. This is on uh, MSNBC. Again, complete joke, but it's worthwhile bringing this up. This is talking about Ukraine being in need of munitions. Okay? What you might not pick up here, but I want you to pick up, is that this is a very subtle attack on Christians. You might not see this. We're going to do more analysis, by the way, on this one, because there's a lot to say about it. But listen to the subtlety of what's being said here, okay? I'm going to start in the middle of this whole thing. Pay attention to what's being said. Here we go. Render to the communists, to the ex-communists, to the wannabe communists. Main force to push back Trump. It's just devastating. And the message is this. Republicans who for the past 50 years have been the main force to push back hard on communism, they've, they've surrendered to the communists. They've surrendered. Mike Johnson surrendered to the communists, to the ex-communists, to the wannabe communists. Mike Johnson surrendered. Donald Trump surrendered a long time ago to Vladimir Putin. Surrendered to Xi a long time ago. He has nothing but praise for Xi, for Kim Jong-un, these communist leaders, Mika. And that is a message that she is receiving loud and clear that it's not just Donald Trump now, it is the Republican Party. Once the bulwark against communist aggression, it is the Republican Party, Ronald Reagan's old party, that is now collapsed. Isn't that amazing? What I think is really amazing are the principles that these people stand for are Marxist principles. Marxism is the, is the, 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 the foundational tenet of what exists within a communist nation, right? I think, I think it's a crack up, an absolute crack up for these people who are some of the biggest promoters and promulgators of communism and corruption, actually saying that those who are conservatives are supporting communism because we're not supporting Ukraine when Ukraine may be one of the most corrupt nations in the world. Tell me if that makes a lot of sense, right? Tell me how much sense that makes. And look what she's about to say, because what she's about to say is, cuckoo, cuckoo, no reasoning. This is a full-blown, all-out, full-scale attack on Christianity. Watch this. It's completely gone, and this is a terrifying inflection point. It is. And for anybody who doesn't take it seriously or think the election doesn't matter or says, oh, he's not serious, you're out of your mind at this point. No. You have to look at Delusional. what's happening. You also So if you don't agree with their position on Ukraine, and if you don't have their philosophy, right, and you don't really look at things the way we look at things, then you're delusional. You're lost. You're gone. You've lost your mind. Listen to the language that they've used here, folks. This is language designed to using propaganda, manipulate people into taking an aggressive stance towards Christians, and to discredit anything that comes out of the mouth of somebody who's conservative because clearly these people are out of their minds. Look what they say, watch. Election point. It is. And for anybody who doesn't take it seriously or think the election doesn't matter or says, oh, he's not serious, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind if you don't take what we're talking about seriously. And if the election doesn't matter, but isn't it funny, by the way, isn't it really, really funny how the leader of Ukraine actually shut his own election down in the name of the war? If you don't believe me, I'll show you that in just a second. At this point, no. you have to look at delusional. what's happening. You also, You're I delusional. Mean, if you read the, uh, the judge's judgment in the civil fraud trial, it talks about Trump's behavior, not just being bad, not just being impossible to stop, being pathological. And so you have to ask the question, what is going on here? He's absolutely doing something for himself or for Putin. It is the opposite of patriotism. 
it, and opposite it, it of, of dedication to this country. It is. The civil fraud claim that's being made is that Mar-a-Lago should only be worth $18 million. And the loan that Donald Trump took against Mar-a-Lago, which was hundreds of millions of dollars, was him being fraudulent. Okay, first of all, since when do, were you ever able to go to a bank and tell a bank, I want you to give me a million dollars on a house that's worth $25? there any bank in the right mind that would let you borrow anything more than 25 bucks? So if Trump goes to borrow on Mar-a-Lago and wants a couple hundred million dollars, you think the banks are not going to do their own due diligence? Do you guys understand that there are properties very similar to Mar-a-Lago right now that are not even an asset? They actually don't produce anything. They don't produce income. They're just simple living spaces that are worth $100, $200 million more than the $18 million they claim that Mar-a-Lago is worth. Do you know that there are some people that estimate Mar-a-Lago to be valued at almost a billion dollars? There are millionaires that are losing their minds right now saying, hey, they're going to come after us next if they can get away with doing this with Donald Trump. So he's committed civil fraud. And he, he just, that's the reason why nobody's supporting Ukraine is because they're all corrupt and, and, and so on and so forth. Isn't it amazing how they're not even voicing any reasonable arguments? I mean, imagine if we went to their house right now and we said, Hey, your house is worth $10 million and you're a fraud because you got a loan to buy that house for that much money. Oh, by the way, did I mention that Donald Trump paid back every single dime on that loan plus the interest, which were millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars more? Hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. But they're going to tell you this and they're going to continue to make those claims and they're going to continue to lie to you because this doesn't even have anything to do with Trump, folks. The, all of this has something to do with you as a believer in Christ living in this country and them positioning themselves to attack you. Them positioning themselves to destroy you. Okay, let me show you what real democracy looks like, as they would say. Read the captions. Read what he says. If you speak the language, you'll understand how evil this is. I'm just going to let you read what he has to say. And you tell me, does this sound like it's on the up and up? Does it sound like a free country? Does it sound like a democracy? This is a guy who's actually killed his political opponents and lots of priests, by the way. Lots of people serving the Lord. That's a whole other story. Read what the captions are at the bottom of this. It's really important that you read this. Ми повинні визначитись, що зараз час оборони, час битви, від якої залежить доля держави і людей, а не час вкидів, яких від України очікує лише Росія. Я вважаю, що зараз вибори не на часі. І якщо потрібно поставити крапку у тій чи іншій політичній суперечці і далі працювати лише у єдності, то в державі є структури, які здатні ставити крапки і давати суспільству всі необхідні відповіді, щоб не залишилось простору для конфліктів та чужої гри проти України. Моє особисте ставлення і заклик, так само, як і 24 лютого, дбати про нашу державу, про її захист, про знищення окупанта, про волю України, яка здобувається зараз в боях, Заради України. Я дякую всім, хто допомагає. Слава усім, хто воює і працює заради України. Слава Україні. Did you see that? This is not the time to have elections. We're at war. He's the righteous guy. He's the guy that stands for democracy. He's the guy that stands for freedom. You understand my point, folks? You understand how backwards so many of these people are in making the assertions that they continue to make? So let's take it a step further. More mockery going on, right? 
I already showed you the John Stewart video, which is just really ugly, anti-Semitic, definitely anti-God, anti-Israel, anti-Christian, undoubtedly. We know that. But look at this exchange. This exchange is very interesting. Again, MSLSD, man, they produce a lot of real special people, if you know what I mean when I say this. Listen to what happens here. And if you don't think that they're beginning to persecute Christians, I don't know, folks. It's happening. The attacks are increasing. We're seeing it more and more. Watch this. Did right. Remember when Trump ran in 2016, a lot of the mainline evangelicals wanted mm -hmm. nothing to do with the divorced, uh, you know, real estate mogul who right. had cheated on his wife and with a porn star and all of that, right? So what happened was he was surrounded by this more extremist element. You're going to hear words like Christian nationalism, like the new apostolic reformation. These are groups that you should get very, uh, very schooled on because they... Which, by the way, I just want to make myself very, very clear. I am adamantly opposed to the things that I see in the New Apostolic Reformation. I don't think that it reflects a biblical value or anything like that. But this is not the point. The point is she's calling anybody who holds fast to a solid biblical uh, belief system, anybody who integrates the Bible into their worldview is an extremist, as she said. Notice she says, ext uh, what is she, extremist? I don't know what she says. <laughs> it's stupid. But listen to what she goes on to say. We have a lot of power in Trump's circle. And the one thing that unites all of them, because there's many different groups orbiting Trump, but the thing that unites them as Christian nationalists, not Christians, by the way, because Christian nationalists is very different, mm -hmm. is that they believe... Which, by the way, she says that, Christian nationalists are very different than Christians, right? Well, do you know that Jeremiah was instructed to be a nationalist by God, right? Take care of the welfare of your nation. All of these people that we read about in the Bible were all patriots and all cared about the national interest. I mean, can it get any darker than what she's doing here? But look what she goes on to say, because this is where it gets really crazy. Listen to this that our rights as Americans, as all human beings, don't come from any earthly authority. They don't come from Congress. They don't come from the Supreme Court. They come from God. The problem with that is that they are determining man, men, mm -hmm. it is yeah, men, yeah. are determining what God is telling them. And in the past, that so-called natural law is, you know, it's a pillar of Catholicism, for, mm -hmm. Catholicism, for instance. It's been used for good in social justice campaigns. Right. Martin Luther King evoked it in talking about civil rights. But now you have an extremist element of conservative Christians who say that this applies specifically to issues including abortion, gay marriage, and it's going much further than that, as you see, for instance, with the ruling in Alabama right. this week, that judge is connected to that dominionist uh, faction. Dominionist faction. Okay. <clears throat> I don't even agree with the tenets of dominionism. I'll just say that right now. We'll just leave that be the whole seven mountains of influence. I, I'm, I have no... I give no credibility to that, and actually, quite frankly, I would very welcome anybody to sit down and have a debate with me on that because I'll tear it to pieces, okay? I'm not saying that. It's not, my, it's not even my issue here because I think that, by the way, the, the tenets of dominionism that centers around these scopes of influence that they oftentimes talk about are broken every day, right? Because they... they <laughs> Let me just say this. It's time to rely upon the spirit of God, okay? But uh, I'm, I'm going to back up, and I'm just going to simply say, it is not an extremist position to say that we should protect the baby in the womb. It is not an extremist position to take a biblical worldview. And what she is basically referring to as an extremist position is anybody who believes the Bible for face value. What she calls real Christians are people who will ignore what the Bible says in an overwhelming majority of the areas that touch society. That's what she's saying. So I want people to understand that the United States of America is setting up a world of persecution right now. The likes a lot of people are not ready to see. They have no idea what's actually coming and what's going to be next and where things are going. They just do not see how dark the world is getting and how quickly they are coming after these people. Look, folks. The Bible makes it clear. These men would be deceptive at a, at a whole new level in these last days. The Bible makes it clear that all the things that we're witnessing right now, all the things that we're seeing, right? They all go back to this issue. Now, 
Let me go back and read this because this is really important. I read at the beginning of 2 Timothy chapter 3. I read the middle of 2 Timothy chapter 3. So let me just finish on this. I just read this verse, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But look what it says in verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and how has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Why? Because all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction of righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What a powerful statement. In the last days where the truth is being attacked, what do we have to do? We have to stay closer to God's word than we ever have before. Well, it's man determining what God says is happening. No, it isn't. God made that determination. God gave it to us in his word. And we have to stay closer to God's word than we ever have before. Folks, in an era and in day when the persecution is increasing at the level that it is increasing, we must more than ever stay close to the word of God. If we do not stay close to the word of God, if we do not give ourselves to the word of God, we're going to have a huge problem on our hands. And none of it is going to be good, folks. It's going to all fall apart. It's critically important that we recognize this. Critically important. All right, let's go over a few more things here as we wrap it up. I think we, um, we've kind of covered the gist of the subject here. I think it's very important. Uh, just want to take a moment to acknowledge some of the other Super Chats and Super Stickers. Vin Dog, thank you. You say the flames, uh, the flames of persecution in the USA are growing higher against Christians, especially if you choose not to toe the line uh, of demons. Amen, dude, you're right. Uh, Brother Lupe Galindo, thank you so much. Uh, Pinoy Ako, thank you. I think this is your first time uh, doing a super sticker. I don't remember that name. And Bart Chun, thank you, bro. I'm not going to read your statement. <laughs> oh, but it is funny. All right. Well, it's actually sad. It's not funny. It's just sad. Uh, let's pray. Ask the Lord to go before us. Um, I do want to just let you know, guys, that if you are looking for a way to support me and my family directly, you can do that on Locals. It is a real blessing right now. We're putting out a new devotion every single day. We're not going to do any live streaming this week uh, and next because of Easter and how busy things are going to be getting, but we'll get right back into the groove of things much sooner. By the way, um, Locals is, is working through a really ugly problem. I don't know what it is with the live stream quality, but we're trying to get that fixed. But if you want to support me directly and my family, that's the way to do it. And we really do thank you and appreciate the love and support that you give us. With that, let's pray. Ask the Lord to go before us. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for all that we've learned. We pray that you would keep our minds and hearts open, Lord, seeking you, Lord, putting you first. And Lord, uh, again, Lord, we do pray for Wayne, Lord. Touch his body. We love you, Father, and thank you. We look to you. and We ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, God bless you. And again, keep fighting the good fight. We love you.